are trophies and records, plenty of them, in Sachs combat competition. And on its debut, the Hustler won its share. Here's one of the two crews entered from the 43rd Bomb Wing, Carswell Air Force Base in Texas. Under combat conditions, they scrambled, boarded, started engines, and got wheels rolling in two minutes and 10 seconds, half the time required for other bombers. Taking off at sundown on two successive evenings, a lone B-58 competed against 12 other bombers, and when the results were in, its crew had racked up the best score for both high and low altitude bombing. General Thomas S. Power awarded trophies to Major Harold E. Confer, the winning pilot and his crew. To officials, this Air Force show proved that their new weapon system had an accurate striking power. And what's more, that the time had come for the whole world to see what the B-58 could do. Chase planes, some of our fastest fighters, also carried judges. They could catch up for a quick look, but they couldn't keep up. But on the ground, the tracking instruments were A-OK, -okay, ready to go. Four miles out. Three. Two. One. And the race is on. NAA officials time it, watch it climb, and a sonic boom as the bomber rips the air. Like an arrow some Indian god might have shot to make it thunder. One thousand four hundred and twenty-five miles per hour was the ground speed reached. Average speed for the first lap was one thousand and sixty-one. For the second, one thousand two hundred. Today's flight, like the previous one, was uphill all the way. They crossed the starting line at 40,000 feet, finished above 50. To give you an idea of the caliber of B-58 pilots, here Major Confer was making a 185 degree turn, keeping a 60 degree bank angle throughout and pulling more than two Gs. Now that's twice the force of gravity. And from down below, the turn looked razor sharp. The least cut inside the crosswire, of course, would have put them out of the race. But they finished in fine style. Having circled the 1,000 kilometer course at an average of 1,284 miles per hour, upping the speed of the previous flight by nearly 100 miles per hour and winning for themselves three of the six B-58 world records. The run was made over a closed course of 669 miles, starting at Edwards Air Force Base in California and reaching points in Arizona and Nevada. The ground crew had done their part, and taking care of a sophisticated bird like this is no job for a shade tree mechanic. as they come, typical of the ground crews that keep the B-58 up there doing what's never been done before. Here's Major Eugene Murphy piloting this one, entering the starting gate at 44,000 feet and climbing. One of the Blériot rules was that altitude at the close of the run must be equal to or greater than the start.
Major Murphy checks with his defense systems operator, Lieutenant David F. Dickerson. On a flight like this, the DSO helps the pilot handle problems of mock and fuel transfer so the center of gravity stays exactly right. They're coming up on the final turn and the roughest. Lone Pine, California, at the foot of Mount Whitney. The pilot gets a reading from his navigator, Major Eugene F. Moses. Round they go. 93 degrees at Mach 2, and then the home stretch. In only one try, the B-58 became the first airplane to average 1,302 miles per hour for 30 minutes and its crew became the permanent winner of the Blériot Trophy. World altitude records for payloads of 5,000 kilograms, that's slightly over 11,000 pounds, and 2,000 kilograms were held by the Soviet Union. That is, they were until the B-58 went after them. They were then claimed for the United States by a crew from the Air Force Systems Command, which does flight testing for the Air Force. A veteran test pilot, Major Fitzhugh Fulton, approached the pull-up point at 35,000 feet, pouring on the coal. Still going, and already they've broken the Soviet record. There's the peak after a bullet-like trajectory. That's 16 and a half miles high. On-the-spot certification was made by the National Aeronautics Association, just as on all previous record flights. Their figures were verified later by the Federation Aeronautique Internationale, Paris, France, as two official world records. For over 30 years, the Bendix free-for-all transcontinental speed race has been a proving ground for the newest and the fastest. back when a daring young pilot by the name of Jimmy Doolittle took off from a Los Angeles suburb and made tracks east, following roughly the same course out of Los Angeles as Captain Robert G. Sowers, the B-58's pilot. Here's the navigator, Captain Donald, and the DSO, Captain John T. Walton. Almost as fast as you can read their names, the B-58's over them and gone. People knew it was up there all right, including some who had never heard this kind of thunder before. You see, most supersonic training missions are flown in special corridors away from heavily populated areas. But today, SAC sent it right over Sky Route 66. At mid-country, the bomber slowed down to 500 miles an hour and took on fuel. Now talk about having flying down to a fine art. Now just, just watch this hook up. With their tanks full again, they're ready to take the giant step on to New York. Each passing minute puts them 20 miles further along. Air Force officials were sweating it out with the NAA, ready for the time hack. And high overhead, an official waited to make an eyewitness validation of the finish.
in just a hair over two hours, two hours and 58 seconds officially, the Hustler completed its New York run, won the Bendix Trophy, and became the first bomber to do so. But this was just half the story. Turning around, the crew headed right back for Los Angeles, trying to beat the sun's westward track across the country. Such greats as John Glenn had tried the sun run without success in manned aircraft. When the B-58 was clocked in Los Angeles, officials knew that a history-making flight was coming to an end. The sun had been challenged and beaten by 41 minutes. The crew had flown non-stop from Carswell Air Force Base by way of Washington, D.C. and New York. Their time from Washington to Paris was three hours, 39 minutes, from New York to Paris, three hours and 20 minutes, including two aerial refueling. 